Hello everyone, welcome to Brainwaves. Today we're going to talk about bipolar disorder. Bipolar disorder with its manic highs and depressive lows is a life-wrenching disease which according to the Depression Bipolar Support Alliance afflicts close to 26 point million, excuse me, excuse me, 2.6 percent of people uh, in the population. Now lithium is an effective treatment for many people for mood stabilization but it does come with sometimes serious side effects and requires careful dose management. So thank goodness for brilliant scientists like Jean-Martin Beaulieu. He's an associate professor of psychiatry and neuroscience at Laval University in Quebec, Canada. And he's won the 2014 Imro Johnson & Johnson Translational Research Award uh, for his proposal to develop some potentially safer mood stabilization drugs. Now, um, he joins us today on Brainways to tell us a bit about his research, and we're very lucky to have him. Uh, Martin, thank you so much for being with us today. Hi, thank you for having me. Absolutely, you're so welcome. It's great to have you here. So, um, we'll start out. Um, we'll, we'll talk a little bit today about your research and what it might mean. So, uh, first question would be, uh, well, I want, well, first I want to thank you for dedicating your career to, uh, to a science which has potential to help many people with uh, brain disease. And I want to ask you, what, what um, rewards you the most about working in molecular neuroscience? I would say the interest is the different layers of complexity we're encountering. So, well, for example, that was fascinating since when I started to do that, that we can play on the activity of a single enzyme. And then we have all these changes of behavior in the animals. Uh -huh. Eventually, that uh, we hope we can see by playing on the same type of mechanism changes in the humans. Okay. But it doesn't take it doesn't take much. I mean, you modulate a little bit something, and when it works, it just goes and changes a lot the behavior. Okay. And, and just to see the, the this this relationship, I mean, you you play with cell biology, and in the end, you end up with an animal or that that behave completely differently. That's really cool, and uh, and hopefully it'll develop into therapies for people in the long run too. So, so hopefully, yes, yeah, yeah, that's amazing. So. Um, so it looks like your uh, your rising star proposal, the research you plan to do in it, builds on a long line of discovery that you started maybe about ten years ago. It looks like um, in your earlier in your career uh, that involves a certain cascade of biochemical reactions, uh, kind of like you were just talking about a second ago, um, that are involved in the therapeutic effect of mood stabilization and uh, antipsychotic medications. So can you tell us a bit about these discoveries and also about um, how you plan to build on them in your Rising Star funded research? Okay. The, so essentially that all started in about 2002 when I was doing a postdoc in Duke University and I had to look at this kinase that we call GSK3 for all sorts of reasons. That was a control experiment and I stumbled on the generation of GSK3 by dopamine. Now GSK2 at the time was seen as a target of lithium. There were some old literature on lithium and dopamine. And we went first to establish the link between G and the dopamine receptors. And then it brought me to this molecule that is called arestin, mm -hmm. that is involved in, let's say, mediating some of the effects of the dopamine receptor. And we found that lithium was actually disrupting an interaction between two proteins, one being at the arrestin and the other one being another protein kinase, another protein that is regulating GSK3. Mm -hmm. And essentially from one thing to another we came to this, we, we shown that lithium by disrupting that was inhibiting GSK3. And the, the objective of the, the project is to replicate this effect of lithium and really show that this is how lithium is affecting the behavior and to do it with small molecules, so something that can be used later on to make new drugs. Okay, that makes it clear how your, uh, the, the mechanisms by which you're, you hope to, to, to harness, the mechanisms you hope to harness to, uh, to improve on lithium. So that's, that's great information, thank you. Now, um, what are your long-term research goals 
and how do you hope to eventually benefit people with bipolar disorder uh, with this line of research? There are two aspects. The first one is very practical. Essentially, if we have new molecules, we could have something to develop further this line of research and this, line, this type of drug. So lithium belongs to a class of drug that is called mood stabilizers. Mm -hmm. And we know pretty much since the 1970s how the other class of psychiatric drugs are working, but we don't know really well how mood stabilizers are working. So development is stalled since years. Hmm. And so if we can start developing new compounds in the line of the mechanisms of what lithium is doing, then it's a whole new family of psychiatric drugs that could appear and help some people. That, that would be the practical long-term goal. Sounds great. Um, I really hope you can be successful there, and I, I have a lot of confidence in what you can do so far, seeing what you've done so far. Um, so, so thank you for doing that research. Now, um, uh, I want, I'm looking forward to seeing you at our music festival for brain health on September 13th here in the Napa Valley, uh, where you'll speak about uh, your research as you've described it here. Um, thanks for being willing to come to that. That will be a pleasure to go, I think. Yeah, yeah. Fun. yeah, it should be. And if people have any questions for you on brainwaves after I publish this video, uh, are you ready to answer some questions? Yeah, no problem. Okay, great. Well, um, thank you so much, Malta, and, uh, and uh, looking forward to seeing you in a few weeks. Thanks, you. See you soon. Great. Bye-bye.